We try to behave ourselves on the story, but y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little uh, extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. As you can is, tell them we'll sit their bad asses down so we're grown folks in here talking. <laughs> T-G-I-M. Y'all girls know me. It's the dog, Miss Funky, Dineva Ross, and we are back with TGIF. One of the hottest shows out right now, guys. We are here to break down the hottest headlines in social media and in celebrity gossip and all that other good stuff. Joined with me are two of the most fabulous people in media, one of which, Claudia Jordan, will be joining us shortly. But let me introduce my co-host, Al Reynolds. What's going on, Al? What's going on, Q? How are you? Good. You know, I'm in New York City celebrating my um, birthday weekend. I thought you were being initiated into Phi Beta Sigma with all that. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so you drink, you drinking anything tonight? Um, I had a I had a full long night last night. I'm drinking Electrolyte. That's long what I'm night. Tell us about it. Electrolyte. Who was he? Who was she? <laughs> no, just hanging out, buddy. Just hanging out. Good, 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 good. Well, listen, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into these stories. Claudia will be joining us soon. Uh, here we go. Recently on The View, co-host Joy Behart had this to say in the discussion surrounding the congressional action on gun control legislation. Behar said, here's the thing. Once Black people get guns in this country, the gun laws will change. Trust me. Al, do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She's not lying. You know, uh, the interesting statistic around this is only 9.3% of black men own guns, whereas 55.8% of white men own guns. I feel like, and we also learned that during the pandemic and during the Black Lives Matter movement, black ownership of guns went up 58%. Believe me, if that trend stays intact, and we also get licensed in these different in these different states and carry these guns like our counterparts do. I promise you, gun laws will change. You know, there was one thing that always bothered me about our uh, Black Greek letter organizations and about our NAACP organizations and all of our other grassroots Blacks organizations. It always bothered me that we continue to do all these grassroots programs. I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. You're a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. And I always felt like it was time that we begin to play psychological warfare with these people. Just our respective divine nine organizations alone. If each one of them started an, an initiative where every member of the organization goes and fills out a gun application and, and, and starts a training program, just our divine nine organizations alone would be able to really bring about some change when it comes right. to the law, because one thing that we do know is that those people over there are scared of us when it comes to having guns. Well, Q, I don't know if you remember this, but I don't know if it was on social media back in 2020, but there was a campaign for African-Americans to register, get a gun license. And it, it went very well, obviously, like I shared with you, 58% increase in the year of 2020 alone. But I think you're right. I think we, as a Greek organizations, lettered organizations, uh, both male and female do need to be more active and do need to be more vocal and do need to be more grassroots, especially when it's things that are affecting disproportionately our community. I agree. I agree. Moving right along, Jennifer Lopez revealed in her Netflix documentary Halftime that she was not thrilled to share the stage with Shakira and called it the worst idea in the world to have two people do the Super Bowl. Lopez continued, if it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have effing done. What are your thoughts on what Jennifer had to say? And do you think she's throwing shade at Shakira? <laughs> it's Jennifer Lopez. I, of course, I think she's throwing shade uh, on Shakira. But to be honest with you, I think Shakira is a better entertainer. I mean, I think she's a, a stronger vocalist. And if anybody should have had just the whole uh, 13 minutes, I think it is, or however it is, it should have been Shakira, in my opinion. Um, you know, the other thing here is Q, Jennifer Lopez needs to be quiet. 
because she got paid 13 million dollars for those six minutes and i can tell you i i mean i'll do <laughs> two minutes for a million dollars but i don't think that gives her much room to be complaining if you you saw it when you got the booking if you didn't like it if you didn't want to share it then you shouldn't have taken the booking you know my biggest issue with jennifer complaining about this whole situation was this super bowl made me proud to be a latina woman okay because i just remember <laughs> i remember sitting back like yes y'all latin bad beans better go it was a great Super Bowl, and now Jennifer is around here giving us this Monique D.L. Hughley image right. about over right. who is headlining. And you know, and it seems to me lately that J. Lo is complaining about everything. everything. The last thing she was complaining about was the fact that um, people don't take her serious as an artist. People don't take her right. serious as an, as actor. an actress. Uh huh. Her, her and Shakira, that to me was an honor. Whether they gave y'all five minutes to do that bad boy together or, or 20 minutes, it was for the culture. Do, do Latin people say for the culture? I'm just still getting over you turning in your white lady card for all of the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I went from being a rich white woman to a spicy Latina woman doing two of them. That's how it made it made me feel proud to be a Latina woman when I see Jennifer Lopez swinging around that pole. Um, Jennifer, shut up with your nonsense <laughs> ass. Exactly. <laughs> all right. The hell? Lord. $13 million. But Q, did you know this? I didn't know this. Do you know that the NFL does not pay for their halftime talent? Like no one in that halftime show um, gets paid by the NFL. Now, what the NFL does do is they pay for expenses and production. But did you know that? I knew that I knew that part because I found out when the weekend, uh, when they couldn't find nobody to do the Super Bowl during COVID and the weekend had to do it that he paid $12 million or something. But the thing about it is, baby, that's one of those marketing expenses. You cannot pay for that level of advertisement, notoriety. Oh, and again, mm -hmm. that Super Bowl show was so impactful. It turned me in from a whole gay black man to a spicy Latina woman. So you know what I'm saying? There white is woman. No, boy, you went from a rich white woman. <laughs> to a spicy Latina woman. Now, listen, y'all, I don't know why these people at Fox Soul continue to set me up and give us stories about Hazel E. Oh, this must be about Bootsy. And about Bootsy. I don't know why y'all do this to me, but during an interview with Vlad TV, Bootsy voiced his concerns about transgender women dominating in cis women's sports and predicted that trans women will play in the WNBA. He said... N word gonna dunk on everybody. Eighty points a game. Uh, all well, it seems <laughs> like Ray J is interested in making Boosie's prediction a reality. Ray J replied to Boosie's video and said, "Let's start a new league. I'll put some money in." What are your thoughts on what Boosie said, and do you think Ray J could be on to something? Q, you better read, buddy. You can read. <laughs> uh, you know what's so interesting here is. I really feel like at this point, Bootsy is is trolling. No, like I, oh, I didn't I didn't listen to the whole Vlad uh, interview. But did he talk about any new music that's coming out that he's working on? Did he talk about any of his philanthropy initiatives that he has in the making? Why is it every time that we are hearing from Bootsy, all we are hearing is LGBTQ stuff? I mean, and to me, is to me. It, it's coming off as like he's anti. He, he's anti. -L is he anti LGBTQ? I've been. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this, but I've been told John Boosie was a closeted homosexual. <laughs> Boosie is the only man, the only black man in media that I know who is so preoccupied and fascinated with what is going on in the LGBT community, and now he's taking it over to the transgender community, like. Of all, I, I get that. I get that you was raised in the hood. I get that you was raised a certain type of way. I get that hood Negroes don't get down with the gay stuff. I get all of that. 
but they also have other things to talk about. And it's just weird because it feels as if, you know what? I never thought Boosie was smart, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know what? He's doing this on purpose because it keeps him in the media. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Q. I never I, thought I he really was smart that. enough to be that calculated, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that is why Boosie continues to do yeah. this because it keeps him in the media. I think he's become the voice of that demographic, right? That that group that feels like he feels. So whenever he has an open mic, he jumps right into it. And he, and, and I mean, in fact, in this case, you know, this story is two weeks old. And then, I mean, this, this swimmer is two weeks old. I don't know. But this is the other thing that I question about him. This generation is coming through now. He is going to be known for his stance in gay and 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 lesbian and trans issues, but more than he's going to be known for his music, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So you know, some we got to drop down in the comments. Bella Butterfly says he is way too invested. I totally agree. And Kamika Edwards says Boosie is obsessed at this point. Um, and I think we can all agree. But we're going to move on from Boosie because I'm getting sick and tired of talking about his ASS. Uh, 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 Recently, uh, uh. Diddy revealed that Young Miami's new show, Carisha Please, that he's single and dating, taking his time with life. So when Young Miami asked him what we is, you know, she is so Miami, what we is. So what we is, Diddy responded with this. We go on dates. We're friends. We go to exotic locations. We have great times. We go to strip clubs. We go to church. What are your thoughts on Diddy and Young Miami dating? And how do you think Diddy responded to that question? Uh, uh, uh. Diddy older than her mama? Yeah. <laughs> Diddy's yeah. older than her mama, right? But anyway, uh -huh. let me be, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to be very honest and transparent. When I first started seeing these two on the blogs, it was it felt weird. I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm, it, it felt weird and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But after seeing the interview and witnessing the energy of those two, I'm actually feeling it. I'm feeling it. Now, I can't understand what she's saying because that subject verb agreement is a little bit jacked up. So, but what we I, is. Don't, don't, I don't know, call right? it Miami vernacular. So, what we is. <laughs> I, she, she, I understand she, it perfectly. So, what we is. That's the thing. When I first saw Diddy and Carisha, it definitely was giving me a creepy uncle vibe right but y'all gotta understand i am from miami the capital of everybody is a drug dealer girlfriend everybody is an athlete girlfriend carisha is getting to the money okay let me tell you something i'm gonna tell y'all one thing about a ghetto miami girl she never gets her feelings too invested carisha knows exactly what she's doing she is getting why the getting is good and when diddy moves the hell on Carisha going to be on left with all the Cartier, all the G-Wagons, all the Revolt TV shows, all the bags, mm -hmm. the hair. And that's what we is. And speaking well, of what we is, we about to take a commercial break and we'll be back with more TGIF after this. You're muted. Child, we got all types of things going on over here. Soulmates, we are back from TGIF. I'm sorry, y'all. I had my phone on mute. But Al, the question I asked for you is, do you plan on getting married anytime soon? Me? Yeah, you. No. Well, no, I, you know reason, something I don't know? No, 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 no. The only reason I ask is because Britney Spears is back in the news okay. for her wedding and there's a whole bunch of drama going on. So it looks like congratulations are in order for Britney Spears and her new guy, Sam, who tied the knot last night. Uh, but it seems like her wedding day got off to a very dramatic start because Britney's first husband, Jason Alexander, crashed the wedding, which resulted in him being arrested. Take a look. Oh, I'm here to crash the wedding, bro. <laughs> so here's the inside scoop, guys, of the wedding, Jason Alexander. Uh, during his mad dash to find Britney, Jason went live on Instagram and made claims that Britney had invited him and that he was the first, that she was his first and only wife. What are your thoughts on the wedding from hell? <laughs> That's exactly, I don't, what is wrong with this dude? 
this dude, y'all were only married for 55 hours. Like, but like, what are you doing? Like, I, I just don't, he just, he's, he's giving me mental illness here. But you know what, Q, if you read the story even more, we found out that he also was at the insurrection on January 6th when all of them rushed the Capitol. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that he's got this thing about tr with trespassing, you know, and the worst part is if you're going to trespass, don't have a warrant out for your arrest. After they came to get to lock him up, they found out that he had a warrant out for his arrest and put him in jail. Well, quiet as it's kept, considering the fact that it looked like he got mental illness and Brittany got mental illness. Maybe had, <laughs> you see why they got along. Sitting up there <laughs> getting married together. And speaking of Britney's wedding, there were claims that Britney's parents and sister were not invited and that it was confirmed by Britney's ex-husband, Kevin Federline's attorney, Mark Kaplan, that Britney's kids were also not in attendance. What are your thoughts on this story and does their marriage seem to be rushed to you? Well, you know, she wanted this conservatorship. I mean, we had a nationwide campaign for this woman to get out from underneath that conservatorship. You had the biggest names in Hollywood supporting that woman getting out of that conservatorship. And she said she wanted to get out of that conservatorship because she wanted to get married and she wants to procreate and she wants to have more kids and she wants her freedom and she wants her money. Something in the milk ain't clean here, Q. I'm going to steal your saying. Uh, you, you can't not have your family at your wedding. Yeah. And if that's not mad enough, you can't not have your kids at your wedding. Now, Brittany, come on. Now, we, I, 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 I have turned around and I've said I want her to be happy. I do want Brittany to be happy, but she, she's got some, she's got some stuff going on, and this ain't good. It's just sad. This is the most joyous moment of your life, I guess, for the fourth or third time, and none of your family's there, and none of your kids are there. You know, I um, I definitely understand the mom and the daddy not being there, the sister not being there, considering that the sister is writing a tell-all book. Um, I don't know if I'm feeling hormonal today or not, but it's just something that just hit me in my heart right now about the children not being there. You know what I'm saying? And just mm -hmm. feeling like, what's the relationship with your children? Why would you not want your children? You know, I'm not going to lie to you. Brittany been a conservatorship for so long and those kids been over there with Kevin Federline for so long. I would not be surprised if they don't have a very close relationship with Brittany at all at this point. Well, she's in a conservatorship. She's not in jail. I mean, like she's on Zoom with them. Um, you know, she's on Facetime. Well, how you know she she's on her, Zoom? They wouldn't let. The, they wouldn't even let her ask. It's her visitation, boy. Her. We're not gonna say she's not a good parent. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go that far to say that she's that she not a good parent. Don't have a good relationship with the kids. I don't know. I can't speak on that. But it, it's something that's very telling in this when your own kids and those are her only kids. Her so, only kids. So we got somebody in the chat. So be a one says 100% Britney parents sent that fool um, to that wedding. How much you want to bet? I, I could agree. Uh, I could agree <laughs> that they sent them over there to, to crash that wedding. You think so? What would you have done in the situation? I don't, I mean, if he crashed, if, if somebody, well, I've had, well, at my wedding, that we had a few wedding crashes at our wedding. So, Did you know? yeah. I called the police. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, the police were all around us the whole time. So it was like. I forgot because you had a celebrity wedding. You had <laughs> Trump and Oprah Winfrey and all the people. <laughs> oh, oh, was Oprah at your wedding? No, Oprah was not there. Okay. Well, Changing gears here, a woman in California was shocked to discover over $36,000 hidden in the kitchen, the cushions of a couch that she bought off of Craigslist. Vicky Yumoto was looking for new furniture on the website when she came across an ad for a free couch. At first, she thought it was a scam, but discovered that the family was giving it away um, and that a family member had recently passed away. Yumoto found the cash while giving the the couch the once over. She returned <laughs> the money to the family who gave her uh, $2,200 as a thank you. 
Al, what would you do in that situation? I would have kept that money. That lady clearly needs that money. She's old Craigslist scooping up free couches. She should have kept that money. Uh, but you know, it's it's something to say about still having good Samaritans in America. I mean, this was a heartwarming story. Uh, but I was like, I they only gave her twenty two hundred dollars. She gave back thirty six thousand dollars. They only gave her $2,200 for bringing back $36,000. I just feel like that reminds me, Q, do you remember uh, in November last year, November, when that plumber found over $600,000 when he was fixing the, um, at, at Joel Olsen's church, he was fixing like a, a, a wall. toilet or something. And he, he went into the wall and he found all this damn money and checks. And they only gave him twenty thousand dollars for finding over six hundred thousand dollars. Like, what are these people thinking? I promise you, she should have at least, at least, at least have gotten um, ten percent. In the Joel Osteen story, of course, the man should have gave the money back because that's the church, and God would have got you. But let me tell you something: <laughs> that money in that damn sofa, God's got a blessing. With your name on it, that would have been my blessing. They would have not gotten a single damn dime of that money back. And then if something did come over me that led me to go back from the goodness of my black heart <laughs> and they only tried to give me $2,200, $2, we would have gotten the tussle out there in that driveway. We would have gotten the tussling because right. how dare I bring you back all this money that you did not even know you had and or existed and you give me a measly $2,200. Can, can production put that picture back up though of the lady? She looked like a good old Christian lady though. She looked like she do the right thing. She said God has been good to her and her family and she was going to do the right thing. Big ups to, do we know her name? Big ups to the woman. And the sad part about it is she needed the money. Hence why she was on Craigslist in the first place <laughs> looking for that old must ass sofa. Uh, and then God see y'all got to be ready when God give y'all y'all blessing. Okay. <laughs> Because that was that lady blessing. Right. And she basically looked God in the face and said, I don't want it. I'm going to give it back, Lord. He no, Q. The best, part, the best part was when she found the money, she called her son. And the son was like, okay, Bob, let's take the money back. Who the heck does that? I'm like, no, thank you. They wasn't raised right, honey. Couldn't have been, <laughs> couldn't have been me and my broke-ass family. Anywho, to celebrate Pride Month, Burger King has introduced a new Whopper. Uh, it is the same as the regular burger, except you can get it with two top buns or two bottom buns. The new burger was created to promote equal love and equality right. <laughs> Are you guys in support of this new burger? And do you prefer the top bun, Al, or the bottom <laughs> bun? <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh that's a good one right i don't um which one do i prefer i prefer I, let me see the choices can you, i see you a picture prefer the two top buns or the two bottom buns i would do the two I'm bottom asking. buns that looks like less bread so you like the two bottom buns i'm gonna do the two bottom buns but the, the less bread but let me tell you something though, hold on hold on hold on hold on all the games uh -oh. that you got her out he said he wanted the two bottom buns. The girl's been wanting to know for the longest, Al, if you wanted the two top buns or the two bottom buns. So. I came with you, boy. <laughs> you best. But you know what? We laugh about this, but um, on a serious note, like seriously, on a serious note, this type of branding to me feels explorative. And it also feels gimmicky to me. And I, 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 it's, it reminds me, it's like I'm tired of these companies profiting off of these marginalized communities. Like for instance, you remember when Walmart did the ice cream and Burger King is now doing a two tops or a two bottom buns. And, and, and they're doing this during Pride Month. What are you doing outside of uh, June? And in addition, what are you doing outside of June? Where, what are you doing with the money? Are you putting it back into LBGTQ rights and campaigns and, and funding for this type of stuff? What's going on? I just, I just don't know. I, 
I'm at a crossroad with this. You can always tell when a corporation lacks top level diversity, because if there was anybody of the LGBTQ plus community and top level management, they, they would have been told out. them this was not something that we want. And then now let me be a Karen and find a reason to complain. Where's the two middle buns for the versatile gays? Okay, <laughs> you got the two top buns and the two middle buns. But if you're versatile, now you're feeling left out because there's no bun to represent you. I'm not understanding why. You 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 know what would have did it for me? Rainbow cups, rainbow right, bags, right, right, rainbow burger wrappings. Um, first and foremost, everybody's around here trying to lose weight any doggone way so adding extra buns whether it's on the top bottom or the middle was just not a smart thing second of all the food don't taste half damn good anyway who wants all that extra bread and thirdly it was just stupid you know what i'm saying a great idea a better a even better idea would have been a neapolitan milkshake rainbow oh, colored milkshake that, that would have been smart or an icy or something or but icy. You what what um that what country was this in like you know these 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 marketing um companies that get hired to do this they get paid a lot of money to come up with that concept two top buns and two bottom buns i just feel like they should have used that money to do more outreach in the lbgtq community transgender and, and here's the funny thing i never thought that i would find myself in a position where i'm condemning somebody that's supporting the gays but uh this is where the conservative uh, people need to be fussing, introducing the kids to tops and bottoms down at Burger King. Like, who came up with that two top buns or two bottom buns? If I want to be a Karen again, how does this represent the right, lesbian right. community? Move There's no that. tops and bottoms in the lesbian community. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, this about whole that. thing was just poorly thought out. Just poorly thought out. Well, hopefully... We'll come back to, to some better thought out situations when we come back to this. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, guys, and we'll be back after this. And we are back with more TGIF. Now, were you one of the millions who were tired of making bread a couple years ago? Or maybe the thought of growing your own sourdough starter was, well, a non-starter for you? Whichever you were, we can all agree there's nothing like hot, delicious, fresh baked bread. Check this out. What if I told you that you could get all the flavor with none of the time and work involved? Well, you can from Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first bake from frozen box for artisan bread. Plus, they have amazing rolls, pastries, and even handmade pasta. Wild Grain uses only clean ingredients such as unbleached and non-GMO flour and utilizes a slow sourdough fermentation process that's better for you and tastes better than anything you can find in a grocery store. Plus, for every new member, Wild Grain donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank. They've donated over 120,000 meals so far. So here's how it works. Sign up, choose which bread box you want to receive and how often. Then Wild Grain delivers a box of bread, pasta, and pastries with easy to follow instructions for free. Every item bakes from frozen in 20 minutes or less. If you are traveling or if your freezer is already stocked, no problem. It's easy to reschedule, skip, or cancel. Are y'all hungry? Already then. For a limited time, you can get $30 off your first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription. That's wildgrain dot com slash t to start your subscription you heard me free croissants in every box and thirty dollars off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash t once again that's wildgrain.com slash t or you can use promo code t at checkout y'all better get that bread and we'll be back with more tgif after this and we are back with more TGIF. And Al, I'm rolling because there's a third person I have to add to my list of people that get on my nerve on this show. So it's Hazel E. Okay. It's Boosie. Uh-huh. And can you imagine who the third person is? 
Rolling Ray. Yes, that dog. <laughs> Rolling Ray. Listen, y'all, Rolling Ray is back in the news. He is calling out Milan Christopher after he announced that he is creating his own version of Bad Boys Club. Now, Ray tweeted, Milan Christopher trying to start his own Bad Boys show, but don't even have Bad Boys money. You still got to pay security. And I mean, pay them good. Boy, how you got, uh, boy, you been Molly Watt by Rio and Jonathan on the block. Imagine the budget under Milan Christopher. This is chess, not checkers. Now, for people who don't know, Milan was a cast member of the Zeus Network show, Bad Boys Club. What are your thoughts about, I was about to say something really off-putting. What, what are your thoughts about what Ray had to say? Um, before I get into that, didn't we invite Roland Ray to be on our show? Yeah, Whatever. he wanted a booking fee. A what? A booking fee. A booking fee, Q? He wanted a booking fee. And to come on the show? Yeah, he wanted a booking fee and tweeted that um, he knows that he's hot and that this show will go on forever and we would be making money for a very long time off of his name and that he was not coming on the show <laughs> without a booking fee. <laughs> Ooh, I need Roller, I need Roller Ray's uh, management. Anyway, um, I don't know, Q, for some reason, when I read this particular story, it just didn't settle well with me. Like, um, for, I don't know, I, I just feel like it's staged. Like this whole story felt staged. I don't know why I feel like Roland Ray, uh, Natalie Dunn, uh, Zeus, and Milan. I just feel like, and Roland Ray, I, I feel like they all are, are in on this story. I don't know why, but I just feel like that. Because it just seems to me like, why would Roland Ray, he's a, a talent over at Zeus. He had that show with Bobby Light, right? Did you see that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I did not. Don't ever ask me, when I, did I watch anything with Bobby Ray, Roland Ray or Bobby Lights? I'm a sophisticated, rich white woman, and we don't watch <laughs> that type of TV. <laughs> You're the, the Latina lady away. Oh, and, and so I'm a spicy Latina woman. We don't watch that type of TV. Yeah, I don't know why I felt like that. I, I felt like this, it, it just felt a little fake. It, it felt a little staged. It felt like it, that they were looking for like some 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 coverage in the blogs and coverage in press. So, you know, I did read the story and the Zeus Network actually did send Milan Christopher a cease and desist. Mm. Um, the name Bad Boys Club is, you know, trademarked obviously as their intellectual property. He put out something where he was trying to hold live auditions for people to do whatever, whatever, you know, I don't know what the interest, um, I'm not even gonna go down this rabbit hole again because we've already gone there with Zeus right. and their right. programming. But, but listen, if, you know, you have you have contracts, Q. We know we have contracts. We know we can't walk out the door and go uh, start another TGIF. Right. Oh, come on now, like that's right. the part where I'm like, this isn't making a lot of sense. Milan, Milan is a is a, a quite a savvy little businessman too. I don't think that he he would think you know, that he can go do this. Like he knows that he got a, a blackout period on his contract until, you know, a certain time before he can be on any other show with a similar name. That's just like you and I and Claudia stepping away from Fox Soul and going to VH1 and saying, hey, we got a, a new show and it's called TGIF. Like this just isn't making sense to me. Me personally, I'm just ready for Milan to pivot. Milan's my age, I'm 38. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We're, we're, we're nearing 40. It just becomes a certain point where all of this sex symbol, I'm fighting people in the club stuff gets old. But I got a question for the soulmates out there. Roland Ray got so much mouth. Are we allowed to fight Ray? Like, are, are, is somebody allowed to run up on Ray and pop his ass in the mouth? Because he's always talking. Always. What do you think, Al? I don't think I can I can't condone assaulting uh physically challenged people, Q. <laughs> you had to you had to <laughs> I, I agree, right? At, at the end of the day, I know it's wrong, right? You have a you have an advantage over somebody like Roland Ray. But Ray uses that damn wheelchair with that little remote control as a license to go around and say right. whatever the hell he wants to say to people because he knows people can't fight him. And I don't think that's fair either because words hurt 
as well. And Ray is always, can you throw water on them then? Right, maybe you can throw water on them, Q. Yeah, maybe I can turn can on a water hose. Throw water on them, but we can't eat them. <laughs> we Moving gotta get on, trouble for this. <laughs> on, it seems like the first sex robot is about to hit the market. Take a look. And you hit chat, you know, she just comes to life. Good you came back so fast, baby. I'm glad you came back that fast. Al, so what are your thoughts on the robot and would you buy one? Hey, my first thought is does she cook and clean too? <laughs> yeah, if she cook and clean, it come with a mute button. I might be signing up for this. But you know what the funny part, Q, was the nerve of this artificial intelligence of the sex robot, it has a revolutionary uh, electronic brain. And what that brain does is that you can set it to charge in the bedroom, like to, you know, be sexually charged. Like you can set it, one of the settings is extra naughty. <laughs> so, and in fact, the artificial intelligence, the the sex doll or the sex robot remembers what you liked from the last experience. So they 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 reproduce it again each experience, and that I thought was very funny. The other funny part that I I thought about this um sex robot was that you can set the sex robot on family mode. You can also set the sex robot on romantic mode. So it's just not just sex, sex, raunchy sex. You can also get a uh, girlfriend experience too if you want. <laughs> so my first response, I'm finna be a black Karen. Why Why they didn't show the black doll where the dark skinned girls at with the braids? That's number one. Number two, how do you wash it? How do you, you know, like, how do you clean it? And is this the type of thing you leave for your cleaning lady and tell her why she's doing your laundry? Can you go ahead and, and clean Stephanie up as well? Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback for this, but I think that there are some deeper future implications um, that this technology may be good or bad for. When we start getting in the area of um, sexual deviancy, right? Um, and I'm, I'm about I'm, I'm about to use a word that's going to probably you know strike a nerve with some people: uh, pedophilia and all of that type of stuff. Could it be possible that dolls and toys could potentially be remedies for some of that? Well, Q, you, you know, there are studies out now um, as it relates to dolls and, and young ladies or girls that grew up playing with dolls and, and young men that grew up playing with action figures or dolls um, have had negative impact. Uh, so it's interesting that you're thinking that this sex robot, because if I'm hearing you correctly, you're thinking it could have positive impact, right? So, you know, research has shown that, um, you know, the the young ladies that played with dolls had body image issues because the dolls were perfect, had perfect hair, had perfect complexion, um, and the same thing with the the guys. So at, I don't know about this. I don't know if it would have positive um, implications. But the thing that also I think it will desensitize the the sexual experience. I would assume for me, one of the best things about being intimate and having sex is the breathing, the pulse, the touch, the moaning, the leg shaking, all of that, all of that to me is a part of my sexual journey or my sexual experience. Without that, I don't know that I could get into it. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I buy a hooker before I bought a dog. True. And that's just the God honest truth. Like I, I'm like you, I need the human contact. I would sign up for escort service before I go buy uh, 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 um, plastic. I've actually, telling all my little business here, I've <laughs> actually gone to the novelty stores and, you know, gotten the little toys and whatnot that people uh, have. I don't like them. 
I don't yeah. like the sensation. I don't like the latex. I don't like the the rubber. I don't like it. it it's it's uh -huh. it's not real. I need a human touch. That's interesting. So you you would not want toys in your bedroom? Not at all. Not at all. I don't I don't like that rubber, that latex, anything. But anyway, we getting too much into my business, like y'all love to do on this doggone show. Moving right along, Jocelyn Hernandez has a. <laughs> Jocelyn Hernandez, <laughs> what's she doing? Jocelyn Hernandez has officially come out of the closet as bisexual. The Puerto Rican princess posted the following message to her followers. My gayness is like my skin color. Proud bi girl, finally comfortable in my skin. Choosing my husband has nothing to do with some good old tongue action. It is time and a place for everything. You all may be as comfortable and as open as I am one day. And this is truly groundbreaking. What are your thoughts on Jocelyn Hernandez telling us what we already knew? I'm here for it. I have to have compassion in this space. <laughs> you know, after my situation, um, I think breathing air into your reality has to be has to be uh, uh, revigorating. Or what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, it's got to feel good for her to say it so that no one else can say it before her, even though, you know, people have been rumored around about it. I'm good for you, Jocelyn. I mean, I'm glad you're doing something positive. I mean, that's amazing. I like it. I mean, the only thing I can give it is a big, I guess. I mean, we've watched her for many years on Love and Hip Hop, um, and she's openly discussed, you know, I will sleep with k michelle i will do this one i yeah. did this one i did that one so we kind of already knew that jocelyn was bisexual so it all feels a bit performative to me it feels okay. a bit it's pride month let me figure out a way to jump on the train and jump mm -hmm. in the mix mm -hmm. of things because jocelyn girl we've been knew you was eating more than pizza hut okay <laughs> but you y'all we gonna go to commercial break and we'll be back with more tgif after this welcome back to tgif guys i want to give a special shout out to the over three thousand people in the chat soulmates we see y'all we love y'all we appreciate y'all al before we went to commercial break though there was something that you wanted to add about jocelyn hernandez being a bisexual that we've been new about for the last 43 years but go ahead <laughs> so no you know i guess my question was it does it hit different when uh a woman comes out as bisexual than when a man comes out as bisexual i think so i can't speak for women but i can speak from a gay male's perspective and uh it's we live in a patriarchal society where men rule the world and men think that's hot. Uh, it definitely in the male community is a hell of a lot more acceptable for women to be bisexual and or lesbian. Men tend to have these huge fantasies. Now, I can't speak for women. I don't know if women feel a certain way when their sister says I'm bisexual. I don't know if they do the whole ill thing, but I think men overall love it. I, I actually think they, they they put a premium on a woman that are getting out with another woman. Right. You, you know, I, the reason why I asked is because you remember uh, on Wednesday we covered the uh, Jess Hilarious story where uh, they were asked, you know, the women if they well, were comfortable being with a bisexual man. And it was like a resounding no, no for everybody no. on the panel. Whereas when you ask men, when we were looking at the Vlad uh, a blog, you know, story uh, this week today, you know, the men are like the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it's, all right. It's a double standard that definitely doesn't work in our favor. But hey, like I always say, you can't have it all in this life. Right. Okay. Moving right along. Are you guys interested in being $2,000 richer? If so, there's a company based in Raleigh, North Carolina called Pest Informer, and they are offering $2,000 to release 100 American cockroaches in your home. Now, the company is looking for about five to seven brave households to volunteer. The purpose of the experiment is to study a specific pest control technique. The cockroaches will have to stay in the home for about 30 days and the technicians will be required to film the process. Al, would you take part in this experiment? <laughs> okay, so listen, Q, I didn't know this. I, I didn't know that there were two types of cockroaches. Well, actually, that's not true. 
Ooh, because I know the soulmates will correct me nowadays. There are in the U.S. two very popular types of cockroaches. All right, or roaches. All right, one is the German cockroach, and one is the American cockroach, which they both exist in American homes. So they want American cockroaches. So for American cockroaches, I would sign up because American cockroaches are not the cockroaches that are most common, like in your kitchen or in your bathroom. American cockroaches are usually around and inside your drains. So for 30 days, I think I could stomach the roaches being in my drain for $2,000. Al, there is no way on God's green earth that you can convince me that them roaches only stay in their drain and at night they don't come out and go lurking around your house. And pest control people, pest control people, y'all don't need to be looking for no volunteers. All y'all need to do is go to some of these neighborhoods and knock on some of these nasty people doors and you already have your American. Look for neighborhoods with kids that got little silver teeth in the back, <laughs> running around with no shoes on, and I guarantee if you go knock on their mama door, all the roaches you looking for will greet you happily. And but those are German cockroaches. That's what I'm telling you. Those are German cockroaches. They want to release American cockroaches. Well, how do we get the German roaches over here? <laughs> <laughs> Something the hell ain't right. So how the hell do we get the German roaches? Right. So, you know, the German roaches are what you see when you turn the lights on and they go running across and all around in the bathroom and stuff. Those are considered the most invasive uh, roach species in all of America. So what I'm hearing is that they don't discriminate it and took all the jobs of the American roaches. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, they done took over the American cockroaches. Lord have mercy. The Germans are invading. The Germans are invading. <laughs> well, moving along, y'all. Tory Lanez is accusing Meg the Stallion, holy God, for upping the ante by speaking with <laughs> Yale King ahead of the trial. Lanez claims he was asked to do a counter interview, but he declined. Meg the Stallion and Tory Lanez trial is scheduled for September. Do you think Megan and Tory should stay out of the media until the trial is over? Um, from optics, yes, because you know the depositions have already been taken, right? The 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 material and and all of the evidence has already been reviewed. It's already been done, right? So it's nothing. If she does, if she goes on television, and as long as her story is consistent, she's fine. I want I want both of them to go away. I'm sorry. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of, of 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 us debating on whether she got shot or not. And doctors reports are saying one thing. Police reports are saying another. I just want it to all go away. I'm just tired of them talking about it. And then maybe that's insensitive, but I'm tired of it. I'm tired of him saying crazy stuff and and going on these rants. I'm tired of her crying and talking about, you know, she was taken advantage of. This was just a bad day gone wrong, in my opinion. She wanted she was ready to go. The other two weren't ready to go. It, it led to some heated ridiculousness after they've been drinking and probably doing God knows what else. And they just need to turn the page and put it behind them. Um, You know what? <clears throat> I'm actually interested in seeing the Tory Lanez interview. Meg already did hers. I thought it was very smart to try his ass in the court of public opinion. In my opinion, I feel like Tory has declined to do the interview because you're going to get caught up in some guilt. There is something we, we can't deny whether the girl stepped on glass, whether she got shot in the foot. There is something that transpired between the time they left that party and she got out that car that all four of them people in that car is not saying all right. Um, much like yourself, I am ready for it all to be over. Um, we'll just have to let the court settle it. Let's so, you know, you know, from the sentiment from the Gail King interview was that it didn't go as great as she had anticipated it. Like people really felt there was something missing in her story, which wasn't to the benefit of her optically. Um, and you know what, Q, now, I would like to hear uh, Tory's side of the story, as long as it's controlled, because, you know, he can go on rants. So yeah. as long as it's controlled, I think I'm with you on this. I think I probably, if I had to listen to it anymore, I would want to hear his side of the story. We, 
We need to hear it. Number one, because we know Meg sat out there and lied when Gail asked her about did they have a sexual relationship. We know Tori is going to tell it. They were having a sexual relationship. I don't care what nobody saying. I didn't have to be there to recognize it or to hear it. They was having one. That's why things got as heated as they did mm -hmm. between them two. Somebody's lying. And I wish there was a world where we could actually get both of them to sit down on one of them <laughs> conversation shows and fuss with each other until we figure out what it is that really happened. But I'm going to tell you who holds the secrets to all of this. That uh, best friend Chelsea and that security guard. Them the two that know. Well, didn't Tori say, Tori said that that he was, you know, messing with both of them, right? And didn't that's probably. It was, like a, it was like a tryst. That's what I had said in the beginning. And I that's probably why they were fighting. Anywho, y'all, we have reached the end of a fabulous episode of TGIF Soulmates. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We love y'all for everything y'all have done for us. Y'all be sure to stick around for the house immediately following TGIF. See you later.